One of the more interesting potential solutions to the Fermi paradox are the variations and scenarios of the so-called zoo hypothesis, where aliens exist but are intentionally hiding and maintaining silence in order to preserve Earth, and presumably other exoplanets as a kind of zoo. But within the overarching question of the zoo hypothesis, the really important question is why? Why go through all the trouble to conceal your existence just to isolate Earth? So here are 10 spooky zoo hypothesis scenarios. Number 10. Interplanetary Contamination One concern we currently have with our lander missions to places like Mars or Venus is the potential that microbes could hitch a ride and possibly contaminate with Earth life an otherwise pristine environment like Mars. This also works the opposite way. Preparations are being discussed for sample return missions from other planets in the solar system to avoid contaminating Earth with alien life. Though the reality of panspermia is that if it were possible, it's probably already happened. But we've learned our lesson with this problem here on Earth. Numerous invasive species not native to where they were brought have colonized many places on Earth, often detrimentally so to the local ecosystem. Aliens may well know this, and they may have species of their own that they know are so invasive, or they suspect vice versa, that only sterile distant observation presents little risk. And that becomes a rule, where direct contact is never established, only contact from a distance, even a short one is all that's ever feasible due not only to the risk of cross-contamination, but there may also be very severe physiological and environmental differences between our species and our planet, and another species that evolved on a completely different world. This galactic social distancing practice may lead to a zoo hypothesis scenario where it's just better to quietly watch a civilization, announce your presence just as soon as they come to the conclusion that biological isolation is a smart move when dealing with aliens, and we get full first contact in every way except in person. Number 9. Don't contact that which you can't understand. Imagine coming across something for which you have no understanding of. This doesn't happen very often in a modern context, but the general human response to something like that is to get away from whatever it is. Though of course, that's not universal. Rarely would anyone try to communicate with it, even if it was clear that whatever it was could communicate. This may be how it works in the galaxy. Alien civilizations are so different from each other that any attempted contact is futile, confusing, and never works. But that may not stop aliens from studying each other. Rather, they may spend enormous amounts of time trying to figure out other civilizations from afar. This is better done undercover, so as to get a clearer, unadulterated picture of what the mysterious alien civilization is like. We might just do this, in fact. If we were to discover a SETI signal, while some would advocate we try to send a signal back through METI, but most will say, hold on, that it may not be safe even at great distance, and advocate we simply stay quiet and study the newly discovered civilization and try to learn what we can about them. We might even take measures to conceal ourselves by controlling radio leakage and other signals from this world, just so the aliens never really know that we're here. In this event, it would be us and our activities constituting a zoo hypothesis scenario. We know about the aliens, but they never know about us, so far as we know. Number 8. We're being watched. One of the more common scenarios associated with the zoo hypothesis is that of watchers that passively watch us from cover without us ever knowing they were there. This might be done to study us without the cultural contamination of knowing about alien life, in order to help us remain as true to our species as possible during the period of study. Or it may not even be that interesting, in that aliens passively watch us just to keep tabs on what we're doing, but otherwise have no interest in establishing contact with us. They might see us as too primitive for anything but scientific study of our brand of life. Another possibility is that the zoo hypothesis in this case is merely illusory, and that the real reason we don't see the activities of aliens in the galaxy is because they work on far vaster timescales than we expect them to. They might visit our star system and check on our progress every 10,000 years, or each million years, and while they might be visible for a short time while observing us, they may otherwise be invisible, and we'd never know they were even out there. Indeed, imagine an alien spacecraft on a survey mission orbiting Earth a thousand years ago. 
Back then, it would have just been a moving point of light in the sky for a time, perhaps dim like a satellite passing overhead, that most people wouldn't have noticed in those days, and those that did might have considered it some kind of strange meteor and never bothered to record such an unimpressive sight. Meanwhile, for all anyone knew, there were aliens landing on Earth in uninhabited areas to study Earth's flora and fauna without revealing themselves to humans on purpose to avoid cultural contamination or any kind of conflict. This is an odd scenario in that it's impossible to prove or disprove past alien visitations to Earth. A one-off expedition every now and again is highly unlikely to leave any traces in the geologic record, and without anyone seeing them in the distant past, we wouldn't be the wiser, leading to a kind of circumstantial zoo hypothesis scenario. But I guess if we ever make contact with alien life and find that they have dinosaurs in their zoos, then we might have a good clue that someone once paid Earth a visit. Number 7. The Slow Reveal One could easily make the case that if an alien civilization were present in a star system with a budding civilization developing within it, that a rapid reveal of astonishingly advanced technology could irreparably damage that civilization and radically alter its development, or even conceivably drive it to extinction accidentally. This was the case with us before modern times, and indeed may still be the case. If there were an alien civilization present, but hiding within the solar system, showing themselves suddenly to us in the past, they would have been incomprehensible despite depictions of such contact in science fiction and the fringe pop culture. Such contact would very likely have been disastrous and damaging, regardless of the intent of the aliens. Even today it would be disastrous. If an alien civilization revealed its presence and its vastly superior technology, the first thing that would happen is widespread shock, or a litany of I told you so's. But that's where it gets very problematic. When you have something with superior technology right in your star system with you, you are no longer in control. So the question becomes, how do we defend ourselves? Whether there is a threat or isn't. It's possible we may not even be able to recognize a threat in this scenario. That's an unanswerable and highly speculative question. The answer ranging from deciding to nuke ourselves to poison this world should they invade, to an acceptance of them as our galactic overlords and trust that they're telling us the truth, or misleading us for some other purpose. The questions in such a scenario would be far-reaching, especially if the alien technology upon discovery were silent, so it may simply be better to do a slow reveal and allow glimpses when certain levels of scientific discovery are made, but keep it only to a hint, until there comes a time when a safe, full reveal can finally occur baby steps indeed. Number 6. The Ancient Taboo Taboos are strange things, at least in human culture, and range in all activities from the etiquette of eating to how to deal with footwear. But taboos may not be unique to humanity. Indeed, some taboos stem from very practical purposes originally. So assuming that aliens may have taboos as well, it has to be asked that is a prohibition of first contact a matter of taboo? And that's the solution to the Fermi Paradox. This might come about in a scenario where the galaxy is dominated by a very ancient civilization. This has been raised within astrobiology. The galaxy is old enough to host civilizations millions or even a few billion years before we arose. There may in fact be very long intervals of time that pass between the genesis of civilizations, meaning that the first civilization in the galaxy may be the one that rules it. In fact, Monte Carlo simulations suggest that this is probably the case, and that intelligence arising in the galaxy happens only on geologic timescales. This also means that if such a civilization existed, and no longer does, its taboos may remain ingrained in any other civilizations that they spawned or came in contact with, or even a subsequent AI or machine civilization. This may result in taboo enforcement, meaning that for civilizations at our level, they remain concealed from, and only when civilizations become enormously advanced enough to challenge the taboo does first contact occur, assuming the taboo civilization doesn't reset or destroy other civilizations before they get to that point. This may not be that far out there of a proposition. Beyond taboos, humans hand over traditions and laws and many other things generation to generation. We're simply born into a system that we inherited, at least to some degree. If we had inherited a taboo against astronomy, for example, we wouldn't be having this conversation, and we wouldn't be envisioning what alien life might be like. 
Maybe aliens are the same way. Number 5. The Minimizing Risk Hypothesis First contact has been envisioned in many different ways in science fiction, from mysterious to friendly to outright disaster. But realistically, what might it actually be like? Well, chances are that any civilization we might come into contact with is likely to be far older and more advanced than we are. Our own level of technology has been capable of going into space in less than a long human lifespan. As a result, any civilization capable of traversing interstellar space is likely to be considerably further down the road than we are. As a result, they may know about technological pitfalls, such as generalized AI, that we are only scarcely aware of and haven't yet developed them to their fullest degree. This and other technologies, such as nanotechnology and the Grey Goo, may simply be too dangerous for an advanced alien civilization to allow to be developed, and thus they may prevent any civilizations from doing so. This would lead to a first contact scenario of intervention only and otherwise silent monitoring to preserve the element of surprise when intervention must occur. To what degree this would extend is anyone's guess, but one solution to the Fermi paradox here is that there are no other civilizations in the galaxy advanced enough to be detectable, save for one, the original first civilization to arise that maintains its technological superiority by setting all other civilizations back when they reach a certain technological stage, both for its own survival and perhaps the survival of the downshifted species. Number 4. The Preservation Hypothesis There is something to be said for uniqueness. With first contact, uniqueness is always likely to suffer as cultural and technological exchange occurs. Say we met aliens, and they gave us their science books which were much more complete than what we're currently working with. It would change human civilization overnight as those newly revealed areas of science are put to use. It works the same with technology. Before contact, you might have a life expectancy of less than a century, and then post-contact, you could expect to live 10,000 years. If this happens enough times, to enough civilizations in the galaxy, the end result could be a cultural and technological homogenization of all alien species within it. This might be undesirable in that it may kill the biological, cultural, and technological diversity of the Milky Way, something alien civilizations may find uninteresting and defeats the point of existence, which to them may be uniqueness. We do this ourselves when we try to preserve cultural traditions in danger of going extinct. If the world had just one culture, things would be pretty boring. This may be how the galaxy works and that no one ever contacts anyone else, and only observes simply because to do otherwise would make life in the Milky Way uninteresting and bland. While it may not seem all that spooky, if you state it another way that all civilizations are forced by someone to remain isolated and unique or else, then the game changes. Number 3. The Cultural Unknowns In addition to spinning scenarios regarding the zoo hypothesis, there is a complicating factor that cannot be predicted. This involves alien cultural norms, of which we have absolutely no knowledge, that may drive a zoo hypothesis reasoning. For example, take cultural xenophobia. Perhaps aliens don't contact anyone and conceal themselves because they don't like outsiders. Or religious concerns. Take an alien religion that reveres the process of evolution to the point that they believe in no intervention in that process at all based on religious grounds. And that's a bit scary. Altruistic, helpful aliens are one thing, but religious zealots are another. And as a result, by knowing nothing about their beliefs, you can't really predict what they will do. Perhaps they remain quiet and leave other civilizations alone for millions of years, and then strike the moment they see an omen, say a supernova, and the civilizations they wipe out go out without ever truly knowing the reason why. Number two there's no one out there. One of the most commonly discussed solutions to the Fermi paradox, and one that on its face seems more on the likely end of things, is the idea that the Great Silence is simply because intelligent alien life is extremely rare. This makes a lot of practical sense, in that intelligent technological life on Earth is rare from a historical context. It took this planet a huge amount of time to produce us, and it may simply be that the road to intelligence is very finicky and few exoplanets ever get there, at least this early in the history of the universe. But there's also another option. 
that intelligent life is intentionally kept rare by a single civilization, and that the mere act of reaching intelligence results in the hiding civilization striking and snuffing out biological life when it reaches a certain level of intellect, and we simply aren't there yet. Another option is that intelligence is simply fatal on its own, and that anything that reaches a technological society goes extinct as a result of it, whether through exhausting resources or destroying their planet. But to invoke simulation theory, it's also possible that there really isn't anyone out there, and we are it, perhaps by the design of whomever is running the simulation. That's a different take on the zoo hypothesis entirely, in that it's not aliens running the zoo, but the simulators, whoever that may be. Number 1. The Laboratory Hypothesis One of the earliest variants of the zoo hypothesis is also one of the most disturbing. It's the idea that the zoo facade is so extensive that what we think we observe in the cosmos may not be the reality of it, and that all of our measurements are simply altered or otherwise misleading. In science, this is a bad hypothesis because it fails on falsifiability, and it fails on practicality in that it would require a very elaborate scheme to make work. But the concept exists nonetheless, and one could make the argument that the fine-tuning problem, that the universe seems to be perfectly tuned for life, might support it. So if what we see is not the actual reality of the universe at distance, then why would anyone go through the trouble? This gets into the laboratory hypothesis that we are actually in some kind of experiment, being manipulated by undetectable forces that conceal themselves and control what we see. Highly unlikely, but spooky nonetheless. But within the zoo hypothesis remains one last spooky possibility, that at some point, someone will not go along with the premise of the hypothesis and reveal their existence to us, perhaps as a form of dissent against the galactic status quo and that the discovery of alien life may be the precipitating event in a greater interstellar war. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently preparing the scripts for Spooky October. I've been hard at work, and they include some concepts that I have never covered before. It's going to be good, and be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular, in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.